Lockpod, the smarter slab solution developed by the Australian Reinforcing Company, has been created as a series of dynamic AutoCAD blocks to help streamline the slab on-ground design process. Let's break down the Lockpod solution into its two main components. Firstly, we have the pods. These form the primary Lockpod system and feature integrated rebar chairs and spaces. Next, we have the extenders. These serve to bridge different pod sizes and can also function as caps for exposed pod edges. The pods are offered in three standard turret heights, while the extenders come in two standard sizes, accommodating for a range of configurations and site conditions. The Lockpod solution features a total of five standard product codes. Within the AutoCAD Dynamic Block Library, each of these products is represented in both plan and elevation views, resulting in a total of 10 dynamic AutoCAD blocks to document the solution. Loading blocks into a new project. Let's explore the Lockpod AutoCAD Library. The dynamic blocks are laid out in an easy to interpret format showcasing the entire product range. Each product code is assigned a unique colour and layer to easily identify product selection. You have the flexibility to integrate any or all Lockpod AutoCAD components. Simply copy the desired components from the library and paste them into your new project. Alternatively, you can opt for a different workflow by assessing the tool palette dialog directly from the command bar. Here, you can create a custom Lockpod palette tailored to your specific needs. Using the Design Center tool, also accessible from the AutoCAD command bar, enables you to populate the palette with the Lockpod blocks, ensuring convenient access for future projects. Dynamic Block Options Let's delve into the Lockpod library file, where the pods have been separated into individual dynamic blocks based on their turret heights, 150, 225, and 300. When selecting the Lockpod 225 block, you'll notice two visibility selectors provided. The top selector controls the pod configuration, the amount of turrets visible, whilst the lower selector controls extender visibility and location. For visible extenders, grip arrows are activated, enabling you to retract or extend the extender within minimum and maximum tolerances. It's important to highlight that the Lockpod 150 block is available only in single and double turret configurations. Therefore, the full and three-quarter options won't be available in the top visibility selector. However, all other functionalities remain consistent with the other Lockpod sizes. For the elevation view blocks, the same extender options are available via the lower visibility selector. Again, the provided grip arrows can be used to control the extension length up to the maximum allowable size. The top visibility selector for these elevation representation blocks control if the lock pod is depicted as line work or masked. This will be particularly useful for automatically concealing concrete hatch patterns in slabs behind the lock pod block. Setting it to line work reveals the concrete hatch through the lock pod unit, which may not be desired. The standalone extender blocks are straightforward. They don't have any visibility selectors present. You can place and stretch them as needed, restricted to the maximum extension length when dragging the provided grip arrow. These blocks are intended to be used alongside combined lock pod blocks for more bespoke design solutions and to satisfy more tricky site requirements. Here's an example of a slab set out. All right, let's take a closer look at this project in AutoCAD. Currently, we're working with a basic slab outline. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll notice a tool palette I've previously set up, which contains all the lock pod blocks we need. Now, to add lock pod units to our slab, it's quite simple. Just select any of the standard lock pod units from the palette and place them wherever you see fit within the slab. While it's ideal to have a specific set out point of reference for this demonstration, we'll focus on utilising the built-in array tool. Let's set the between values for both columns and rows to 1200. I'm now able to use the provided grip arrows to stretch this array to populate the entire slab. I can then utilise the explode function to gain independent control over each of these lock pods within the greater system. In cases where we have multiple lock pods interacting with each other, it may be easier to interact with the properties dialog rather than using the provided visibility controls via the arrows. 
For example, I could select this row and choose to extend extenders on side 1 by 250 mils and similarly extend side 2 by 300 mils at the top. To simplify the block configurations, we've elected to provide extenders for either the left or top, as seen on the screen. However, we can complete the system by manually placing standalone extenders. Alternatively, I could select the last column and use the mirror tool. When I select this final column and specify extenders on side 1, they apply to the right side because we're mirroring that block. It's worth noting that updating extenders on side 1 in the top row may require revisiting corners. To address this, I can multi-select the properties dialog choosing extenders both sides that will ensure the system is closed out around all corners. Similarly, I could select the bottom row, mirror, specify extenders on side 2 and extend by 300 mils. However, we need to ensure we clean up these corners afterward. While this is a basic slab configuration, it demonstrates how the array tool and a combination of these dynamic blocks can significantly streamline the documentation process for the LockPod range. LockPod, the smarter slab solution. Brought to you by the Australian Reinforcing Company.